Hello there, I want to make a little video on how to rig a hand. Of course, I've uh, already done that in the full rig video, both in French and in English. Um, but here, uh, I just wanted to focus on uh, the hand part of the rig, because it's probably the most complex uh, of the, the base of the body. Not uh, as complex as the face, of course, but it's uh, more complex than uh, just rigging a, a gimb or a leg. So, Here's the finalized rig, okay. Uh, of course, this is not the only way to rig a hand. You can have uh, some more joints to bomb or uh, flatten the palm, okay. And these are um, quite close to the metacarpal uh, joints. So if I were to rig this, okay, pause, okay. What I could do would be like uh, adding like four joints, okay. Probably more centered. And then uh, repand all those guys to my wrist. Key. And do the same for this. If you want to reduce the uh, length of your moves in Aikitsu, you can just move the interface, which is pretty cool. Um, etc etc okay um, then I can if I want uh, I can rotate these okay pretty cool and uh, to skin those new joints uh, what I can do is actually um, steal the skinning of the, the palm okay so you select both joints then uh, if you are on the joints that have the weight you remove add it if you are on the other joints you add weight Uh, and it will go to the other joint. Uh, so I can do things like this. Okay, so here I need to add. Okay. Like this. Move. Okay, here I can see that I missed some weight. Okay. So I think here it's, it's better to just remove joints. Uh, joint weights, um, yeah, instead of adding them because you, you see actually what you, you remove or add. Okay, um, and then you just need to smooth out a little and be done. Okay, move. Okay, then if I want to uh, rotate some of these joints, okay, I can do this, etc. Okay, so that's just one way on uh, rigging your, uh, your palm. Um, that's definitely not the one I would like to use, actually. Um, but, uh, yeah, and always just uh, edit your pivots. Uh, more useful uh, directions. Okay. So I, I made it pretty rough, but um, you, you can see that it's it's totally okay. Just to make the rig uh, really fast um, and without worrying too much about details. But uh, um, usually, what you want is uh, having a good pivot um, according to uh, where the joint is, uh, where uh, what, what you want to control etc. So it's not not necessarily um, aligned with the child or uh, anything else. Uh, for example if you, you take just the wrist uh, you have several childs so you can just pick uh, any and uh, say okay I will align my pivot with everyone. You will just align it with uh, what you want to control. So it's the wrist, align it, align it with the wrist. Uh, that's it. 
Um, but yeah, yeah, let's say uh, we want to rig it from scratch. So I will delete all these joints. Okay. Um, I can't remove this one. Yeah, just because it's a bar. So I guess. Okay. And let's let's remove those. Okay. So first of all, um, you need to be in bind pose. Okay. You have the rig attribute here. It create joints. Um, let's also recall one thing, uh, remove the auto-orient joint and connection. What this does is uh, auto-align um, the feather uh, of your child. So if I create a joint here, like for example, and then here, etc., you can see that the joints are uh, aligned. And uh, yeah, it, it can be useful, but the um, align is pretty um, ignorant of uh, how you want to control your character and uh, often it, it just doesn't align in a um, interesting direction so what I prefer to do is just create my joints like this leave those that are already well aligned uh, as, as is and uh, align uh, my joints uh, well later so um, yeah, here. Yeah. So to align my joints, what I like to do a lot is uh, use a uh, end joint just as a target to uh, automatically align the joint. Um, I can also hit auto orient since I'm on the wrist now. Okay, so it aligns my wrist automatically. Then I can delete my joints, remove the auto orient, select my joint, create the sum. Um, This okay, get this again, place my joints, okay, and just be careful to remove this every time you create a new joint. Okay. A new um, when you start a new chain of joints, um, okay, and reactivate it when you restart a chain. Um, I can also just create my fingers like this. So I just click uh, everywhere I want to have a uh, pivot. Okay. And uh, remove this, I can still put this window. And now uh, what I can do is simply select this joint here then the wrist, parent them, and then I can safely remove all the tip joints. And I'm done. Um, then, of course, I will still need to um, adjust my um, green axis. So how I do this is going in rotate mode and use the only axis that is OK, and it's often the blue one. Um, so I can navigate into my scatter like this. And Always just compare to your uh, model. Okay, see if it's uh, well aligned. Okay, cool. Um, so now uh, one thing that is uh, also important to have in mind is uh, where you place your pivot. If you place it in the middle of everything, uh, no matter how you will bend this joint, uh, the model here will be smooth and here as well. But if you take a look at your articulations uh, on your hand, you actually have some parts that uh, are more softer uh, than the other and it, it's often just a matter of uh, the upper and the lower uh, areas. So if you want to place your joints here, for example, when you will bend your uh, joints, 
this point will be really um, hard and this one will be uh, more soft okay um, of course you can skin the way you want you can uh, decide to have a super soft uh, weight sharing uh, on the above but um, it's really how much the vertices will move um, in this position so here since they are closed they won't move much here they are uh, further they will move more that's just uh, this so now uh, we need to go in paint and check and actually add weight so if we take a look at the uh, rest of the skin you can see that we, ha we, we have like some uh, areas we can uh, we, we can pick um, I often like to activate the uh, wireframe so I can see where the vertices are um, and if I can uh, paint them easily or not. Um, you can also use Shift key here, just the middle mouse button just to make quick corrections. It's cool if you want to uh, pick some uh, edge loops etc. Uh, really quick, just rotate in the good position and then this uh, lasso quickly. Um, of course, if you maintain, you have a free lasso. If you just click, you have a hard lasso. Um, so I'm doing this just to isolate the weights of the wrist from the rest of the arm. Um, a good thing is also is to uh, lay out your uh, joints uh, properly after the uh, previous one. So you can navigate through the arm and the hand uh, pretty easily. So uh, first select uh, with your right click all of the, your uh, palm. Then control and click on uh, the arm joint. You need to have no vertices selected the LC. Um, just won't be able to add these joints or you, you need to go directly in the picker but uh, this is cool to actually do this this way since the picker can be quite big and uh, uh, having your joints down the list to retrieve the one that you are you need to follow can be a bit uh, uh, daunting so now um, we can navigate on this joint position it's I think it's pretty cool um, we need just to fill joint uh, weight from the wrist and give it uh, give it to the other part of the wrist. So, uh, as before, select both joints like here, and I will paint this just the skin actually, so I can do the paint. And uh, there as well. Okay. In add remove and just remove CV. So this is my thumb. Cool. And now we do the same for this one. Yeah. So if you want to change um, the joint from where you paint, do this through the skin attribute, not uh, using the up and down arrow key because it will just lose your section. Um, so again, I'm from this joint so I can better see what I'm doing okay. um, mm, mm, mm. Good. Wait for the joint thing. So now, um, if I want to smooth uh, influences between joints, what I can do is select both joints and smooth out. It will normally yeah, smooth between just these two. It's really cool for the in-between uh, areas like this. Um, 
and uh, if I go back here, this area here, see, is that so one. And you can also try to just smooth from a uh, single joint. Like you can uh, guess pretty well, pretty often, uh, with which joint uh, this one should share its uh, weight. But if it fails, make sure to just select both joints you want to uh, make the deal with, and uh, it should be okay. Of course, you can quickly see how it behaves uh, like this. Okay, you can just rotate your fingers. You can also rotate them uh, and leave these uh, rotated so you can adjust your skimming while it's bent. You can see how it behaves uh, with new updated weights. It's pretty cool. Um, okay. And from this point, you just want to um give uh the new weights to the following joint uh, so here it's it's misplaced but uh, we will just skim it right and move the joint later okay um i want to make this part like this okay you can quickly go in by pause and edit your joints. So if one joint is okay, just select the other one, move this one, and you should not lose this uh, guy here. But you can also uh, activate if you don't want to lose a lot of your work. Like if you move your joint here or uh, place a little uh, below, is uh, you can use the aim buttons. So you you will keep your uh, parent and uh, child, foot child oriented. Okay. So I can see that I have some some joints that requires me to replace and position them. Cool. And of course, if I, if I do this, I, it doesn't mess my skimming because skimming data is just uh, telling which vertices is attached to which uh, which joint. It just doesn't tell um, the joint it is closed or not. Uh, it doesn't work like that. Let's go back to the paper check. This is actually a good way to implement the uh, remove add uh, joint. Okay. So you understand what you are doing with skimming. It's not something pretty difficult to master, uh, but you have to yeah, understand how it works. Uh, so you're not doing uh, a lot of clicks everywhere and mess up your model skimming. Uh, so now if you want to smooth, you can be pretty, uh, well, imprecise, but um, just do a few clicks and uh, it should be okay. And of course you can uh, right click some joints, rotate the finger and uh, see what it does if you smooth out this part and this part and this part. It's pretty cool to be just do this so you can really see how your controls evolve. I 
hope it's not too soporific, by the way. Uh, I know by, uh, by experience uh, with some of my students that the skinning, the rigging part is, is not the part I like the most. But it's really important and, um, and cool as an animator to be able to rig yourself anything you want to animate. Uh, here you're done with your uh, skinning uh, and uh, joint placement. You just miss one little thing and you're done, uh, which is the name of the joint. So uh, uh, let's say I didn't make the other hand. So I go to that. Okay. And I want to mirror my skinning to the other hand. It works. Um, in Akitsu, if your joint uh, has the label of the right or left side, it detects automatically um, to which side it uh, belongs, and so uh, which one it should clone and create this joint. So what we need to do here, uh, if we want to be really, really uh, quick, uh, rough and dirty, would be just using the rename tool, add a little suffix or prefix, like underscore r at this and now you can see that the uh, mirror button is available and you can mirror the skin and the joint but of course it's better to name it according to uh, what your control so race time etc i will do this for the sake of the length of this uh, already long video but um yeah just add this level and you will be able to mirror joints and add uh, good names so you or your animators will be able to figure out how which joint you will control it's cool when you edit curves when you edit your model uh, if you want to attach something in unreal to your skeleton uh, to have good names uh, in your hierarchy so that's it for this video uh, which was quite long um, but i hope you've learned uh, how to rig a hand and uh, Figured out some uh, questions you may have um, about reading in a kit. Um, and of course, watch the previous video if you want to uh, learn how you can actually um, make posings and uh, kind of uh, drive and key or axiomatic roots in a kit. Which, uh, big spoiler, you, you don't have this, but you have. Something else that um, plays the same role, if not better. Uh, I hope you, yeah, you've enjoyed it, and um, see you next time. Bye.